Well, in this video, we're going to go over a problem from 2000 Virginia Tech Regional Math Contest. So this is a problem that combines geometry and calculus. It gives us a triangle ABC with three sides as L1, L2, and L, the segment BP as X, and we want to find the integral of cosine of the angle theta as X ranges from 0 to L, and L is the length of this side. Okay, so we have to find an antiderivative of cosine and then uh, evaluate it at the end point. That, that, that's at least one way of approaching this problem. There may be other ways of doing that, but this is one way of approaching this problem. But how do we find cosine of this angle? Now I'm going to tell you how I approach this problem and a couple of different uh, ways that I approach the problem. Um, they, they did both work, but one of them ended up being easier than the other. So in order to find cosine of this angle, one thing we could do is we could use law of cosine. So what is law of cosine in a triangle? If you have this uh, triangle with size B, C, and A, we can write down law of cosine as A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC, cosine of that angle. And we can find cosine of theta from here. So this would be B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So if we do that here, we get that cosine of this angle theta is going to be x squared plus ap squared l1 squared divided by 2x times ap. So that's cosine of this angle theta. Now, in order to be able to integrate this one, we'll have to find ap in terms of x. But how do we find ap in terms of x? We could use what we call Stewart's theorem to find ap. So what is Stewart's theorem. So Stewart's theorem tells us this. If you have a triangle with sides B, C, and A, and you have a segment here D, and this is M, this is N, it tells us that man plus dad equals sink plus bomb. This is just a way to remember this formula. It's just easier to remember it this way. Now if you take that and plug it into the um, into this diagram, we get man, which is x, l, l minus x, plus dad, which is ap times l times another ap, equals, and then we get l minus x, that's n, times c squared, which is l1 in this case, squared, plus x times l2 squared. Now from here, we can solve for a p, there would be an, a square root and then plug it in and then integrate. That turned out to be quite complicated, but it did work out. Now, after I realized that this is going to be a, a bit challenging, I thought maybe I can find a different approach in finding the cosine of the angle. So let's draw the diagram again here and let's try to find the cosine in a different way. So we have the diagram, the same diagram we're going to draw. So this is our angle theta. So how do we find cosine of the angle? We're well, just going to drop a perpendicular, and we are going to call this length m, and this length was, of course, x. Why am I calling this length m? Because cosine of the angle theta is going to be x minus m, which is this length. This is x minus m, divided by ap. Now, I would like to integrate this quantity, which means I need to find AP in terms of X. Note that M is a constant, so we can use what we did before, which was using the law of, uh, using the Stewart's theorem to find AP, but that also turned out to be complicated. There's a better way of finding AP, so how do we find AP? Well, we could simply use um, in triangle AHP, Pythagorean theorem. So this would be square root of AH squared plus x minus m squared. Now notice that a h and m are both constant. So these are both constant. So let's see what we were trying to evaluate. Integral from 0 to l of cosine of theta of x dx. This is equal to integral from 0 to x. Okay, so we know that cosine is x minus m divided by square root of a h squared plus x minus m squared dx. Now, note that the derivative of x minus m squared 
is exactly x minus m multiplied by a constant of 2, which doesn't matter. So therefore, that suggests we need to do a u substitution. So let's do a u sub for ah squared plus x minus m squared. du would be 2 times x minus m dx. So this becomes integral. At the bottom, I have root u because of that uh, u substitution that I chose. On top, I will have 1 half du. And of course, uh, the limits of integration are going to change. So when I plug in x equals 0, I will get ah squared, so x equals 0, u becomes ah squared plus m squared. Now, what is ah squared plus m squared? Well, this is just this triangle right here, this triangle. What is that? That's L1 squared. So that is L1 squared. And if I plug in the end point, so this would be L1 squared. And if I plug in the end point of L in that equality, I get AH squared plus L minus M squared. So what is the quantity AH squared plus L minus AX squared? It is exactly L minus M squared. It's exactly this triangle, which is L2 squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So this is exactly L2 squared. So this would be L2 squared. OK, now, fortunately, this is exactly a derivative of u to the power of 1 half. The derivative of u to the power of 1 half is 1 half u to the power of negative 1 half. So that's that. And this is u equals L1 squared to u equals L2 squared. And once you plug in the endpoints, you get uh, L2 minus L1, which is what exactly what they claim it to be. I will see you in the next video.